Okay, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture about visual design and a little bit of fluid navigation, but mostly about visual design. Um, this will be a lecture that we will start today and we will continue Monday. Um, that covers various aspects of visual design, layouts, text, colors, etc. So some of these things will, can be useful already now for the uh, low fidelity prototypes. You are creating others like colors are of course not uh, useful yet because you are creating something in black and white. So not a lot of sense of talking about colors and indeed we will talk about colors next week. So today we are going to speak about visual design the first, let's say, part and then the second part will be colors and other things later on. Uh, but before, uh, let's criticize this. What is this? What is this? <coughs> This is the menu of the Apple Watch to, to open the uh, apps. Uh, this is not the current version. This is like two years ago version. Um, so what you can notice from this. Um, in general, what you can notice from this. So how it's supposed to work, this menu. By, by tapping. By tapping Yes, and, but all icons are the same size? No. No. Why some icons are bigger than others? They are kind of like, it's like they are near <coughs> to the screen. So it has a perspective. It has a sort of perspective. So the, the idea in this menu is that the, uh, in this version of this menu, menu is that the icons in the middle are the biggest one. And as, so, as you move towards the corners or to the periphery of the screen, they are incredibly small. small. Mm? So they, the, the center that they are, the bigger they are. Mm? Okay, so pros and cons of this. He was saying uh, small icons. Uh, this is, of course, very, very true for like, things like this. This is very small. But for others, considering the screen space, they are adequate size. What else? <coughs> quick access. It's, it's easy to move around. Mm -hmm. Maybe hard to, to choose the, uh, the, the, uh, a certain icon with a finger. So. Which, it's hard to choose a certain icon which one or in general, in general. because why uh, if the, the size of the, the apple watch is uh, uh -huh. much, the icon is very small also the biggest one icons could be sm small even the biggest one mm -hmm. something else it's difficult, to, uh, it's difficult for search for a specific app it's like I've asked you what is find find the um, reminders icon first. How a reminders icon looks like. So if you have an iPhone, you can recognize it because it's the same icon. But if you don't, or if it's a new icon because they change it, or it's a new application, that's difficult to to find them to recognize them because there is no like labels, etc. But there is similarity with the phone icons. So that's help. Uh, but then find the reminder icon. The reminder icon is white with three smaller uh, colored dot on the left side. And it is in this picture. It's between App Store and Podcast. But it's Something you need, he has good sight. He also has hey, glasses, that helps maybe. But it's difficult to quickly identify an icon. 
immediately. Uh, because also if you move the space, it's easy to move, but as move the space, since the uh, icons in the middles are bigger, the change, the size of the icons change as well. Mm? This is an animation. So if you scroll up, this icon becomes smaller and this icon becomes bigger and this icon becomes bigger. So the relative size of icons change. <laughs> Okay, so this is not, not bad. And another positive thing that we, we just mentioned Fitz Law a few lectures ago, but Fitz Law uh, defined, for instance, that circular menus like these are actually easy to use and more efficient to use than linear menus. Hmm? Despite we don't see many circular menus in our application, they are actually easier to use and quicker to use and more efficient to use than linear normal menus. So this is also a circular menu, so it's not, it's not so difficult uh, for that perspective. Efficient is easier and more efficient to reach an icon given a starting position than a linear one. Uh, but it has all, all the other problems like which is this icon, where is an application, so it's harder to, to find one. Yes? You cannot choose the, the size of the icon in this version. If the icon is in the center of the screen, it's bigger than the icon in the periphery. Can you choose also which is in the center? Yes, no, uh, it's about how you move the screen. You can choose the positioning, yes, but it's about how you move the screen. So if you move the screen uh, on the, uh, let's say on the right, uh, this icon becomes the biggest one and this becomes the smallest one and this becomes bigger because as you move the perspective change mm -hmm. and by default the clock is in the center because it's the the watch face in the center um, so it has some problem so if you have a more recent Apple watch uh, which, which changes they, they, they did which actually helped to solve this problem some of these problems The grill is the same. Icons so small doesn't happen anymore. Icons are less um, different in size. And here you can scroll every direction, not every direction, but vertically and horizontally. And instead, in the newer version, you can only scroll vertically. Hmm? So you can only scroll linearly from top to down. This helps solving the some problem. And they added another version of the menu, didn't they? They added the linear version of the menu, which is like the labels, the icons, all are bigger, so they are alphabetically ordered. So if you are looking for a reminder, you will scroll down to the R. And we will just keep A, B, C, D, etc. So the linear menu is less efficient than the others, but if you need more time to familiarize with the icon or you prefer an alphabetical ordering instead in the other here, the ordering is random. You can choose a different order, but it's not you don't have category, you don't have alphabetical order, etc. cetera. Um, you, you can have the alphabetical order in this, in this way. So this solves some of the issue that the um, circular, let's say, menu as while introducing uh, less efficiency because if i start from the center I want to open messages is like just here it's immediately below and if i want to open reminder it's just here i just need to scroll a little down once i identify the icon is there if i'm here i want to open messaging i need to go to the m first so slowing time but easier recognition so now there are these two options in the Apple Watch, so they try to balance and give options to people uh, to start where they prefer, and both versions have their own pros and cons, but they sort of minimize um, themselves if you choose one or the other, according to your preference. Uh, something else you want to add on this before we move on? No. Okay, so this is not, not bad. This is a sort of all of fame, but they had some issues and they fix it in current version, even in the circular menu. And adding also this, this, this version wasn't present until two or three years ago. 
It was only the only menu that you had is this one, was this one. Okay, so this is also partially related to uh, visual design uh, in the sense that we, when we talk about visual design, we talk about these three um, topics mostly. We talk about guiding the user using a graphical user interface. We talk about pacing and we call, talk about messaging, mm -hmm. where guiding means to convey the structure, the relative importance, the relationship between elements. Mm -hmm. So if you again you look at this, just this one as an example, which is the most important, the most relevant icon on screen? The clock. The clock. Why? Because it's in the center and it's bigger. So this is guiding. You are giving relative importance and relationships to the uh, icon, which is the order here. I told you, but which is the order here? If you just look at it, you know which is the order of these icons? Alphabetical. And it's Britain that is alphabetical? No. Why do you know that it's alphabetical? Because you know the alphabet. You know the alphabet. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's knowledge that you have that allow you to understand the structure of something. Even if it's not written, this is ordered alphabetically. This is about guiding, so conveying structure, relative important relationship. And in the linear menu, we added the icons and the text. And for each of them is repeated. Uh, and it is spacing. Hmm? So drawing people into the app, orienting them. Hmm? Again, we talk about being consistent. Hmm? And this menu is co are both consistent in the behavior, in how things appear, in colors, etc. Showing where to go, what, which are the options on the screen, etc. And also messaging, that means expressing meaning and style, in a way, breathing life into the content, hmm? uh, both at the conscious and subconscious level, as I exemplify with the Apple Watch, uh, for instance. Uh, visual design also has a goal to make everything look uh, beautiful from an aesthetic perspective, perspective, but this is not actually the real fundamental goal of visual design. The real fundamental goal of visual design is guiding, pacing, and messaging. And in doing that, if you are also able to make it look good, that is a, an additional thing. But things that look good, but don't guide, don't pace, and don't message, they are terrible visual design, even if they look good. So it's something beautiful to see, to see but it's not, that's terrible to use. And of course, it's preferable to have something good to use and maybe not so good to see. Um, so just to, um, to clarify, we of course, we are not talking about art in this lecture. We are not talking about artistic skills. Um, so you don't need to become an artist um, to, to do this, uh, to, to apply visual design. Um, artistic skill can be a help, but they are not either necessary or sufficient. Um, because in this case, we're talking about visual design that needs to be practical, it needs to, again, guide, paste, paste the user into your application to use in a way that is more usable and e efficient your uh, application, your system. Hmm? Uh, real design skills, it is another thing to keep in mind, real design skills take years to master. So we're just scratching the surface here and you will try to apply some of these things, some are easier, some will not come immediately to your mind. And why do you accept the heuristics, the principle we mentioned, the heuristic we will mention next week, are a good and easy start to keep some of this visual design uh, concept in mind. Uh, so let's start from the basic. So look, about, look at this text, five seconds. What's the text about? Yeah, that, that is also in the title of the slides. But what was the text worth saying? Was talking about text then? Hmm? That was talking about colors. And then? Was talking about three things. 
layout. Now look at this again. Um, and then look at this. It is better or not? It's the same content, the same text. What's different here? Spacing. So one element of uh, visual design, the basics, is also written in the text, is actually use white space to separate logical chunk of content. This is true for text, but it's also true for elements in the applications. Mm? So elements that are closer, they will have the same, uh, a closer relationship, the same meaning, the same uh, goal, and things that are separate by space, there will be white space or colored space according to the background, but they are separate, they have different logical content. Okay? Now, what about this? If I'm asking you the same three questions before, what the same questions before, what's this text about? And you just see this for five seconds. What's this text about? Text layout color. Why this text layout color? Because they are bigger. There is hierarchy in the content. Text layout colors are headers. Here, text layout colors are mixed with the same importance of everything else. Hmm? So, this is not really something you can get it. This is easier at first glance to see. This is even easier thanks to white space and hierarchy of content. What about this? It's better or not? It's better. What's change here? Indentation. Indentation, because alignment, and then? Less text. I, I already told someone, reduce text in your application. Uh, less text. Less text plus hierarchy, plus alignment, hmm? help to focus on the content. So now, if I at a glance, what this slides is about. It's about text, layout, and color, and white space, white space font, and alignment. Because again, hierarchy. White space, font, and alignment are a different hierarchy than the normal text, but it's a different hierarchy than text. So you can, at a glance, understand that, text, that white space, font, alignment are attributes of text and not related to colors without someone telling you that white space font alignment are without writing using white space next font size finally alignment without the full sentences you can at a glance get information you want you need hmm? so three key ingredients for uh, visual design in text are especially for text are white space font and alignment Fonts give hierarchy. Um, also in a document, in a normal document, not in a, an application, uh, fonts and size give hierarchy and give structure of the document. And when you find a document that uses maybe five different um, fonts or style within the same page, then there is too much going on in that page because it's it start to compromise the hierarchy of the content. What is the most important? Why this is bold, this is bold and italic, and this is bold, italic, and underlined, and this is the same thing with another font. What is the, the relationship between things? That's great confusion, and again, we want to avoid the confusion. Hmm? So the key ingredients in visual design are text, where white space, font, and alignment, as we've seen before, are good examples, layout, and we already know that, for instance, in web application, mostly is about grids and then colors. So these are the three ingredients we are going to, to talk in these three hours. Text, layout, and colors. Um, but in addition to that, these are things that help us also to give a sense of familiarity. And again, this is something we found in, with principle. 
So look at this page structure. This is a website. Which kind of website is? News. How do you know that is a news? It's not written news, right? It's not. Because the structure, the mental model of you have seen enough news website and all of them have the same structure that even without reading you know that this is likely to be a news website this is building on familiarity of the people this is building on standards that people have standards de facto that people have so if you want to create a news website that is uh, recognized as a legit not a fa fake but a legit news website you will use this same structure because that will allow people to find more recognizable and trust the website more and use it more and in this this was actually CNN so the same structure what about this search engine uh, because yes this is probably Google but actually like Bing uh, is not very different from this so this is search engine so again if you are going to do a search engine you are not going to use this structure hmm? but you're going to use this again this is links to what I was telling you yesterday if you're doing if you are doing a mobile application in your paper prototype you will use the elements that are common in the mobile application because that is the trust of people and then will make immediately recognizable as a legit thing for people without thinking, without questioning, without anything because they already know how to use it. Mm -hmm. They already know that here, even without the reading it, they already know that here you have to type something and these are the results and these are related to this main result. Because again, hierarchy, uh, familiarity and white space also hmm? bordering etc hmm? what is this question answer style, question -answer style like stack overflow again exactly and we can continue what is this <laughs> yeah let's uh, abstract it's not Mm, website for a physical store like bookings so or travel this is travel it's not booking it's trip advisor but it's travel mm. and it's there is a map there is a sign of a map here and there are dates calendar so that's mm. so again you are almost always able to recognize the content the scope of a website according to the page structure even if you don't understand anything like this well I don't understand anything here but this is a website about news well it's Britain news but even if it was all in let's say Chinese uh, you still are able to recognize even if you cannot understand the content you are able to recognize that the structure is the same and this is the same as you can see from this example across the globe so again leverage on these things in creating visual graphic application leverage on familiarity and consistency across different product and again convention also help recognize structure something that um, in part I told you again yesterday um, when we talk about if you're doing a mobile application use the conventional mobile application so uh, this is a website uh, these are three conventional website um, four conventional website which are these four conventional website big four convention in a website here there is a nether there is a sidebar with navigation and there is a footer and there is the title of the page somewhere here 
And in data, there is the name of the website that is on the top, uh, that is on the left, and then there are sections in the main navigation on the top. Again, the majority of website has a top navigation on the top, and so convention helps to recognize structure, even if you cannot read or cannot understand what's going on in that page. Uh, this is also partially linked with this principle. Uh, we are not going to, to see all of them, but basically the, the principle of Gestalt uh, say that how humans typically see object. Uh, so humans typically see object by grouping similar element, recognizing pattern, and simplify complex image. So if we can group similar element together, white space, grouping similar logical content of chunk of information, create patterns that are recognizable within the application, consistency, or across application, website, etc., as we said, and help them simplify complex context that is how we work, typically, as human beings, in general in the world, not just with graphical application or with um, or with interactive application. Hmm? So if we can use, for, for the good in a way, uh, use these tricks to engage uh, people, the usage of the application will increase, the time that people spend on the application will, will increase, and the easiest of the application will increase as well. Hmm? And then, of course, this principle can also be used for the bad, like to keeping the attention of the people on the application forever hmm? because we can provide more advertisement for instance but also that those builds on uh, how people work uh, some of these principles are just listed here uh, we're going to see uh, a few of them but um, for instance we can just mention a couple uh, so for instance figure ground we look for solid stable item and things in the foreground catch the attention before the things on the background. So if you want to, uh, the people to have the attention on something, this something should be in the foreground, like the clock icon in the Apple Watch menu, bigger at the center in the foreground. Um, or closure, we automatically fill in gaps to complete, to perceive a complete image. Uh, or common region, we group elements. Hmm? what we said about white space that are in the same closed region or proximity again we group clo clo closer together elements separating them from those that are far apart familiarity i already mentioned familiarity uh, qu quite a lot symmetry we seek balance and order and we struggle if there is not symmetrically or balanced things within a page an application a constraint etc so these are some of the principles, and here there are some uh, examples. Um, so let's use the, well, this is a, one example more, um, let's say, for, for fun in a way. So what do you see in these two pictures on the top? Two faces here. And also, um, mm -hmm, yes, a base in a way. And what do you see first? The faces. So this is playing with the figure ground, showing in the same picture both thing. And some people get first the faces, some people get first the base. Here, what do you see? The Apple logo or the silhouette of Steve Jobs. Again, these are made to, to play with the figure ground. Um, to create confusion between these two things because they are quite prominent both. But here, let's look at this website, uh, which is the figure ground. So let's figure ground. We look for solid, stable item, and foreground catches the eye first. So what catches the eye first in these two websites? What, what is the title? In this one, angel list, of course. Why? Bigger, whiter, 
and more in the foreground, more solid than everything else. So this is by default, by design. And in this case, this is more things going on in the page. The green logo or the image. Who we'll see first the green logo? Who we'll see first the image? Hmm? So actually here the green logo, that is the logo Basecamp 3, is something that is a little bit more in evidence because it's, it's on, it seems on top of the page. There is a shadow behind, etc. Hmm? Then this is the second element we see because it's big and it's messy, is strange. Uh, if they were uh, with the same, uh, at the same level, the same interface, we would uh, look uh, the green image because it's uh, because easier it's to understand. Okay. Yes, even if it was the same, probably they will, we will look at the greener because it's, uh, it's, simpler. it's simpler, but also it's, the only, let's say, thing in the, ba in the body of the, of the, the web page is color red. Everything else is black and white. So we will, our attention will probably get coached by the, the, the only thing, excluding the header, that is color red. Because it's green, it's orange, it's uh, blue, etc. Everything else is just black and white, except Google and the, the header. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Getting attention, yeah. breaking consistency. Yeah. But there is the, the uh, innovation for a designer, for example, because uh, I think uh, we need something new. It's enough. There are different levels, no? So this is uh, a principle that was discovered in 1920, so it's not recent. Uh, and this is these are principles that in this case are applied to website, but they can be applied for whatever, also physical objects. Uh, here is an example with website because we, uh, it's, it's easier than not using a, a door, let's say, or a sign somewhere. Uh, so the fact that we try to complete image or get attention on the bigger thing or the colored thing on a black white page, that's going to happen probably also in 10 years and this was happening 20 years ago and was happening in 1920. So it's not the principle holds because this is how we, by evolution, in hundreds, uh, thousands of years, we evolved as human beings. We pay attention to the bigger uh, thing on, in evidence as, as human beings in, in the moment. And we, in thousand years, that will be changed, but it's not something that can change quickly. Uh, another thing is, about recognizing the structure of a website, or web application, etc. This can change across the year, of course, like this web page is not like this anymore. Now it's not like this anymore. And we went through uh, web page which were like, um, we, we are now seeing much more website like the Apple website with this infinite scroll that loads new things and there are more and more of this website and less of other kind of website with like side navigation, etc. So there is evolution in these things. Um, but still, uh, or like the hamburger menu. I mentioned already the hamburger menu. The hamburger menu is a terrible idea from a usability perspective. Um, but it was, it started by Google, I think, to use them and then it became uh, standard de facto for mobile applications. Uh, even if it's a terrible idea for usability, 
uh, or the carousels. We, we have seen for years carousels on website. Now we see less and carousels on an accessibility perspective are terrible. So there are things that are not particularly good, but we use them because they either some big brand started to use it and then become popular. Because again, we like, we as human being like consistency, find things, oh, but I know how to use this menu because I've seen it 100 times. And so I'm going to, to create it again. And then there could be innovation, um, but there will be either someone that already has trust of people to use it, uh, or they should be able to build the trust over, over time because otherwise people will perceive it by default as something strange, something maybe not really trustable, fake, etc. and there will be difficulty. Mm -hmm. So one can start from familiar things and then maybe change a little bit here and there over time so that one can build uh, distrust in the brand, in the company, in whatever, and then propose something more. Yeah, this is a long answer. But um, example similarity. Uh, let's look at GitHub, uh, which are the things that are, um, let's say, similar, the same logical chunk of content. Just looking at them. The? Yes, both are green and then, but similarity in, co in uh, positioning on the page. This three, this four. Do you have any doubt that these four are, are not connected together? No. And there is any, anything that say that? Any line that contour them? No. Because they are close enough to be connected. Hmm? Um, news, news website. Um, we can both look at similarity and logical content and hierarchy here. So what is the most important news in this page? So this one, you say? Yeah. These are not behind, yet they are not behind it. Uh, they are behind them, yeah. but it's not related to this. So the, the important news are for sure these and these, because they are bigger. They have a full image and a full title, and the lesser important are these three. Because they're smaller, it, three instead of one, etc. So again, hierarchy. And, but similarities. So these three are similar because they are actually the same thing repeated three times. And if you scroll down, you probably have other three images here on the bottom. And are these blue things the same of the other or they are different? They are different. Why they're different? Because the consistency is different in the time. So we group them as a we group them as different things because they have they are blue black background that the other doesn't have. Even if it's probably not so big the difference in size is not much different from this other, but they are in a separate, they are in a column, they are blue and they are all videos also. So we, without thinking, we recognize that these things here and these things here are category one. These other things is similar together and this third column is similar together. And again, these are tricks that we can use also to give similarity, consistency within the things that we, we do. Um, well, this is an example about proximity and common regions um, like these are comments because well they have a different background and they are separate from the main content and the main content is white etc um, continuity um, so here i have five items from i think amazon and um, an arrow what happens if i press the arrow how many elements? Five. 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 And why not one or three? Because of the length of the placeholder. Hmm? 
because it's written page one, because of the size, uh, but implementing them, we could decide that this arrow do whatever we want, right? We can say that it's upload, uh, add one item, three item, a random number. It's not that it's a technical limitation, but again, something that we, we do this way and we imagine it work in this way for continuity. There are five items, an arrow, and we expect that that list will be replaced by other five items. That will be page two. Uh, or here, step one, step two, step three. What do we expect to be the next step? Four, five, Four, five six. Because continuity. Mm -hmm. So again, if you are doing something like this, try to maintain consistency and continuity in the operation. And in these five, what do we expect to see? These are five books. What do we expect to see? Five other books. Because we, and, and this is something we expect. And what happens if we don't see five items or don't, we don't see five books? We are confused, we, we are confused in a way. So we, we question what, what happens. We notice there is something <laughs> wrong, even if it's a small thing. Um, closure. Closure means that we try to, to fill up an image even when it's not uh, fill up. So for instance here, what's the logo here? IBM, but it's not solid letter, are just lines that are made in a way that we reconstruct this as an I, and this is a B, but it's not a real B, our lines. It's our interpretation. If we don't know the um, Latin alphabet, we will not recognize this as a B. Hmm? Uh, or this, this is not a zebra. Well, this is a zebra, but it's not contoured. These are just lines positioned in a way that looks like the animal. Um, focal point. Focal point means using something in a page to get the attention first. So this is connected with the bigger um, screen in the first example. But which is the focal point in these two pages? So on the left one? It's not the title. The red button. And in the other one? Well, the green button or this cent thing is centered. So again, the focal point is connected to the other, but it's something that we want the people to focus on first. And this could be done. In this case, there is also this big text, but this, this red button. This is the only red thing in the page. So we immediately catch our attention for good or not. In this case, for getting a free API, so uh, you can decide. Okay, this is about the principle. Let's talk about typography. Uh, well, of course, typography, text has various characteristics, point size, leading, uh, um, serif or not serif font, etc. Uh, if you're curious, there are links you can, uh, you can know, but Let's say that in general, you can have different style applied. To, you have different fonts, of course, and you have different style that can be applied to different fonts um, and different also weight of the letter. So you can have a bold font with a weight of 100 and a bold font, the same bold font with a weight of 300. Uh, this is evident uh, on, for instance, on the web. When you use some Google fonts, etc., you can specify also the weight of the letters, of the font, in addition to the style, bold, italics, etc. Um, fonts in application are again used um, consistently and according to, to some type scale. So for instance, this is the material design type scale. So material design define, in this case, using web uh, related concept in this picture, 13 style that if you create an application using material design, you should use. So if it's about a header of first level, header of first level across all the application should be a Roboto typeface with font light, size 96, and center case and letter space minus 1.5. Mm, that is the space between individual letters, not between individual lines. Mm. 
and on the other end the overline is still a roboto as a font but the font is not light is regular so different weight and the size is smaller is 10 and the case is not sentence but the all caps and the letter spacing is not minus 1.5 but is 1.5 so it's 50 percent larger than a normal font used the spacing between letters so if you use or if you create an application you want to use or create at least in your mind something like this all headers will be the same font the same color the same size the same distance from the letters from other font etc again this is for consistency but it's also for guiding people because when they will recognize something big like this they will know that it's an important header and if this one is 96 in page one and is 120 in page three and it is another font in page 11 they will not recognize the pattern and since as we said before we love patterns we try to define patterns without patterns we cannot get a sense of the thing and we start thinking about the application and then we'll stop using in the end if there is too, ma too many things in the application hmm? so you can either rely on some definition like this or create your own even simpler definition like this uh, font size color and, color and spacing of course define a hierarchy of visibility and attention and the visual hierarchy should match the relative importance of the content within the page the screen etc so here there are two examples one marked with an x and one marked with um, a checkbox a green checkbox these are the same information the page has the same function it's not that one will allow you to do things differently from the other it's exactly the same thing but why one the the tick one is better than the other to you. The color of CPA should be more unique. The other uh, elements in the page shouldn't compete with the CPA. The color of what? CPA can clear my page. This one? Yes. What should be? okay let's let's abstract a little bit this uh this definition so for instance one thing to change is that this confirm and pay uh, in the two application is the same um, but here is a different color it's a primary color in this case uh, and like the header is another color and the other button is a significant different color but that help to increase the contrast but why this is should be of another color it's the main of the because it's the main action of the page so it should be easily and immediately recognizable which is the main action which is the option that you want the focal point in a way that you want to pursue for your user that is confirm and pay of course that should be the ideal outcome of this page then what else is changed between these two pages? Also for the cancellation, the colors. Yeah, the colors for the same reason of the bottom of the cancellation. Let's move around, let's move away from buttons. The title. the title. Why the title is smaller here than here? What's the problem with this big title? Because the main uh, question is uh, uh, about the page. Yes, the page is about confirming the payment. And a level of hi hierarchy here, the highest hierarchy, the highest attention goes to the Comuna Gallarate, not to confirm the payment. So this is not a page about, that talks about the city, but this is a page that confirms the payment. So the attention should go in main action, that is again, the one that is related to the main action as a button, that is confirm and pay. Hmm? Uh, what has to change here? Also the name of the card. Also. The what? yes the owner the, all this information are smaller why these are they are smaller the, 
Mm, yes, partially because of consistency, because all these fonts are smaller within the page except the total that is the same. Um, actually, the total is bold or has a different weight than this one because, again, we charge information if you are paying and confirming a payment. So you inserted the data, you already put something in the cart, you confirm them, and now you're okay. Are you sure you want to pay? This is the page are you sure want to pay? Which are the critical information in this page to check if you want to confirm the payment? The, the amount they want to pay. So that should be quite evident. So that's why it's bold and the button, the button to click and the action on the page. And so everything else should be smaller. Uh, if we remove the information of the card, it would be fine or not? No, no why not? Because it needs to confirm that since it's, there is a card, the, at least the partial information is here, the four uh, digits in the end, the name of the person, the validity, and the kind of this card is a MasterCard or not, are correct one. Mm? Uh, and then the other details, like the amount is repeated here, and the probably is also in the other page. Uh, so why are repeating the amount to pay here and here, for instance? when? It should be in another page already. Because we, we imagine that was selecting and we we'll say 1652 uh, euro, and then you insert the, da the, the data and then you confirm. Hmm? You have this 50 cent in addition, yes. But why you, well, why you put it also here? This probably is common on multiple page. And another thing we said when we talk about principle. Yeah. Don't have people remember information between pages. So once you set up an amount, maybe there are multiple steps, but this is not how much it was. It's, it's written. And then here it's written again because this additional 50 cent, if there was not probably, there would just be uh, the total without this other detail and here there is also a why you have to pay this additional 50 cents so you, you can look at them and this is a link and it's a different color that is the same primary color of the button because this is actually uh, a good information something the person want to, to understand why they need to pay 50 cents more mm -hmm. so and all of these is done by font size color and spacing the same information different screen according to just size, color, and spacing, okay? Um, layout and text convey meaning as well. So again, same example as before, one good and one bad. Uh, so what is this about, first of all? No, and it's not renting because it's, I hope not renting, uh, given the amount, uh, is buying <laughs> an ounce, yes. So this small house, detached house, five years old, um, $750,000, um, three bedrooms and two, bed two bathrooms. So same information, more or less, in the two page. Why this one is better than the other? The most important things to the user are bigger. If you're buying an house, which are the most important things you probably are looking for? The price. And then if you like the price and you can afford it, which is the second things you want to know? Mm, the other is less. The, num the space, how big is the house? Like is $750,000 for uh, one room or for um, a castle? Uh, so in this case, three bedroom, two bathroom. And then the third information you really want? Mm. You like the house. You have in your bank account $1 million. You want to buy it. Then which is the next information you need? The contact. Yes, you also want to see the picture and where is the house, etc. But you want to, to call the person to say, can I visit? Can I get more information, etc. So all these information are also here, just all at the same level of importance. So there is no guiding of the content. Hmm? 
So same identical, more or less information. Same information, not identical. Report is slightly different. So instead of reporting the year of construction, it's say five years old. So instead of having you doing the math, okay, we are, well, in that case, they were in 2017, so it's five years old. Um, so okay, now it's 2017, 2012, and so it's five years. Just say five years. And now it will say uh, 12 years. And next year we'll say 13 years. And for a computer, it's really simple to do the difference. For us, it's something, okay, so how old it is? We need to just think one second to do the subtraction between the year of construction, etc. Hmm? So there are, again, hierarchy and text and layout. Again, same information, totally different layout. Um, if you, for instance, don't know English and you cannot, so let's say it is written in, in Italian for the non-Italian people. Uh, do you know that the first one is a bedroom and the other one is a bathroom? Why? Because of icons. So, in general, icons and text used together increase the usability and recognition rec and be the, make the element more e easy to recognize, always. It's not always possible to have an icon and a text, but the combination of the two is typically better than then just having the icon or just having the text, <coughs> uh, even if you know the language. So in this case, hierarchy and layout are less structured layout convey meaning on which are the important things you want to look at first. So you can decide if you want to explore the house more, see the picture, see the address, contact the person, or just too expensive, or too small, or too big, or whatever, and move on quickly. Okay. Uh, let's talk brief about alignment. So alignment are typically invisible lines, sometimes are visible, but most of the time are invisible lines, that, that run through the interface and attract, in a way, the left or the right edge of a widget within a graphical user interface. It could be, again, vertical alignment or horizontal alignment. So this is an example. What is this? Well, it's in Italian, but what is this? Well, it doesn't matter the program. What is settings, settings for, for what? For, for saving documents in PowerPoint. Options, settings. Okay. Um, there is an alignment here or not? Which alignment? Sorry? So the menu items are left alignment, meaning they are in the left. Mm -hmm. And then? All the labels uh, with the gray box on the right side, mm -hmm. they are aligned also the, all the other checkbox. All the checkbox are aligned except this one. And because it is uh, relative to the other. Because hierarchy, because it's relative to the top one. And also text. Is aligned all these things here if they, if they are not the same are aligned one side and in this case since it's free text are aligned also in the other side and also text here is aligned it's not only the, the left sidebar but it's also text within the sidebar is aligned on the left not on the center not on the right this is a possible alignment hmm? so this is invisible lines it's not that these red lines are drawn um, this is vertical, and then, of course, there are the horizontal. And alignment, actually, is something, if you look at documentation, so, for instance, this is taken from the um, uh, Visual Studio documentation. So, Microsoft say, if you are creating an extension for Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, the, the main program, uh, you have to follow these guidelines, this thing, and they say, that you should align things and that the label should be 12 pixels from the margin and then each text area should be exactly 24 pixels and the distance instead of horizontal should be 12 pixels etc and the button 
um, should be bigger 75 per, per 23 pixel if you want to do something that is aligned with Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio as a program. Mm -hmm. So alignment is not just something that we experience, it's something that guides like Microsoft documentation for developer enforce and recommend in a way, in a very specific way in this case, talking about pixels of distance between one button and the others. Mm -hmm. Again, not because they don't have don't know what to do in their day than me measuring things in pixels, uh, but because this is consistent with the application and this help and guide people in using whatever extension within Visual Studio independently from the creator, being it Microsoft or being it someone else. Uh, and if we look a little bit older, in 1999, we found exactly the same principle for developer. This is from a guide of Sun Microsystem, which is now Oracle, uh, in creating Java application. So it's not something that we discovered at a certain point, but it was so something that for developers, in this case, was always present and recommended. Hmm? So in this case, uh, for designing a Java application in 1999, you should have exactly this thing and the most important option should be on the top and then the button should be on the bottom, a line on the right, and with a distance in pixel of these, etc., etc., etc. So this is something you can find also nowadays in developer documentation for graphical user interface. So not only something you have to, to keep in mind for designing in general, but also if you are within an ecosystem or a framework, you will receive specific guidance. Um, there are specific naming for things, uh, like the guides are the edge, in which you choose to align content with, the column are columns, vertical division, the rows are rows, horizontal division, margins are margins, um, gutters, so area that surrounds your content, uh, gutters are the margin between columns, uh, so still margins but gutters, uh, the end line is an horizontal guide to align content horizontally. Uh, the baseline is the horizontal guide for which an element will sit on top. And the rhythm is the proportion system that help define the sizing frequency and the spacing of each of the both. Mm? So the rhythm is what orchestrate uh, how many columns, how many rows you can have, how wide the margin are, etc., etc., etc. So this term that you can find in, let's say, documentation. And if you think, for instance, at uh, Bootstrap as a framework, you, they use column and row with the same exception, uh, not by, by chance, but because this is a common name for this, this kind of operation. And margins, it's widely used in the web in general, um, together with paddings. Um, so these are margins, these are column and gutters, and this is end line and baseline, and this is a baseline grid in which, again, it's not written, but every, let's say, row has a grid in which you can build something on top of it, that could be a button, a text, an input area, or something. Uh, this is another example, which I like, column, gutters, margin, uh, within uh, uh, material design, again, and you know Bootstrap, but that it used the same concept for, for doing that. It's column, and you can use multiple columns, etc. Uh, same things for responsive, and of course there are other good systems like unsemantic or tailwind, uh, which have other characteristics like being not only responsive on the web, but also being flexible in how you structure information within uh, the page. And if you look at grids, you can find them also in website. Mm? So this you should you can recognize alignment and grid structure in the same page we've seen before mm? so the bigger pictures are aligned and the text is aligned and these three elements are spaced exactly in a fair way equally way one from another and etc and the right column is aligned horizontally and vertically every element in the page mm? um, even if in this case it's mixing two columns one and two with moments in which there are three and four like one two columns here and three columns here in the main body that becomes four 
entry as soon as you add the, um, the right uh, column that is the blue one. Same thing for Stack Overflow. And I would like to say same things for Polytechnico, but um, let me go back here, for instance. Uh, let me go back here in a while. Uh, so still about alignment, let's look at this example. This is the same page. Uh, what is this page? Amazon for adding an address, like your home address. Uh, this is the page in 2015 and in 2019 and probably today. Um, why did it change? Well, it was aligned on the left uh, and in a Western context, alignment on the left are fine. The, this one. What's the so they don't have a reason, you know? Each time you save uh, your restful name and uh, put a, a text inside the field, you have to come back to another point. I the same place. here, no? Because this is full name and this is address, so it's not so different, no? But they are on one line, you know? But this way you should move like a mm -hmm. but exactly. Actually, this is not a real problem. But why they become one line? What change that in 2015 was not present, but in 2019 it was? Mobile. The mobile. Hmm? So this, up, this version of mobile will be quite painful with different sizes, etc. But this is not. This is mobile first in a way, even if it's on desktop. So this alignment on the right of all fields justified occupying all the space on the page actually became evident because of mobile. So most people use a mobile browser to navigate onto Amazon and so the application, the design adopted to the usage of people. Since most of people use a mobile phone and mobile phone has a specific layout and size dimension, they adopted to it and adopted to what other applications also were doing leaving this modality that has no problem on a big screen on a desktop but on mobile it could be tricky and not coherent with the current moments on 2019 which button this one what do you mean Oh yes, if they want to, to keep the same, it could be extended well, to, to the edge, to, to keep the same yeah. content, yes. And for accessibility? For accessibility, it doesn't matter m much because it's already a button, so... But if one is right there, What do you mean accessibility? Right okay. That, you mean accessibility? Oh, no, because you can... Well. In any case, you have one hand for keeping the phone and the other hand to do things independently of which hand you're using. Okay, uh, best practice from all these things about alignment. And then um, we, we'll talk another time on next week on colors. You don't need colors yet. Uh, so when designing a template, start from the longest block of text. Hmm? That will help you to define which information you want, if you can synthesize the information, how to structure the hierarchy, the information, etc. as the beginning of this lecture. Uh, left aligned assigned text is usually faster to scheme, in, especially in the Western world, and vice versa for um, right aligned languages. Um, alignment guides, um, alignment guides the eye and reduce clutter, gives more order. We like patterns, we like similarity. So more precise things are, the, the more we like it instantively. Uh, so try to avoid misalignment. Well, not in the paper prototype, but moving on. 
uh, patterns and deviation are automatically de detected in both ways as we talk about consistency. So if you deviate from something, that will be automatically detected. And similar, if we make a pattern, that will be automatically detected by people in either good or bad way. Uh, so we can deviate from patterns, we can deviate from consistency for strategic reason, and use visual proximity, bigger, smaller, closer, etc., and scale to convey semantic information of the content we want to convey. Hmm? So also colors, but we will talk about colors next time. So quickly, let's look at this example about uh, steel alignment. So this is, what is this? This was the, um, the study plan for computer engineer software path in 2019. About alignment, which are the problem? Yes. Which one? This one? No. Yes. This one? Yes. Down, we have the... Yeah, there is a star also. Mm -hmm. So here there are two icons, where there are only one. Well, they are aligned, the center of the line, so... Mm -hmm. uh, well, these icons are, of course, not, not aligned, right? Because it depends how long is the name of the course. Uh, what it means, a uh, red camera? No, like, no, there's no description. There's no description. Oh, yes, there's no description. Right. You, you, the red camera, the yellow camera, the green camera add a meaning that I totally forgot. Uh, but if you look at this now, you never seen probably use this version. Uh, you always have seen this other version. Um, but there is no, no clear. And the is Sorry? The is yes, the grid is not clear. The, li the rows are not clear where one's end, one start, etc. So for instance, here there is data science, data technology, or data science and technology, um, the same course in, Ita in Italian. So this or is not really evident between courses that doesn't have or and have it. So in 2020, they redo the page. Uh, different layout is better on the alignment perspective, like all the languages are here and all the credits are still here. And here there are one or two icons always, etc. So it's, it's better on that perspective. There is still something wrong on a visual design perspective, on the content, on the semantic perspective, the information that there is in this page which is one thing. When we have the two courses, Italian and English, which are not good. Exactly. So each line has a different color that helps identify the, the courses. So uh, information system is white background and um, computer architecture in Italian is a gray, gray background and alternates. So helps identify which lines are. But what happens when there is an OR? that they still follow the same mechanism. So if you show this page to a high school student, one interpretation of this page is that information system and computer architecture uh, in uh, Italian is in OR with computer architecture in English and data science, which are both in OR with data science and computer network, which are both in OR with the other three. While this is not how it works, hmm? the way it works is that information system is there. Um, computer architecture in Italian is in all with computer architecture in English, and that's it. It's not in all with other things. Hmm? So in this case, maybe keeping the same color across the three option or having a way to highlight these three option would have been served on the semantical information of the visual design to get this information. Hmm? Right. Uh, and everything else is an improvement from the previous uh, version, of course. Uh, but I think this is still the page that you see on the Portale for all courses with the same problem with the OR. Mm? So here there is knowledge in your mind that is how the OR works that is, is not giving you a problem. But if it's like first year student that doesn't know, you will have some doubts what this, this, what this OR means. 
in this page at least uh, and again there are no um, description of these um, icons I think that they changed the icon now is not there is no uh, camera anymore I think on the on this page currently because here there is the same color green and red um, but this was 2020 so we were we had cameras because of course COVID um, so all of them at a certain point had cameras um, okay so this is same page the improvement but still something if you want to, to improve and again uh, alignment guides reduce clutter if you think this or this this is cleaner easier to read than this mm? because everything is more aligned more coherent within the page okay with that we can stop here next week we will talk about colors and we will continue with uh, the other aspects on uh, visual design have a nice rest of the day. <laughs>